Hey there, how's it going today? It is time for us to look at 1.7 and 1.8. We're combining these together as it all deals with graphing uh, linear inequalities. And so 1.7 is solving systems inequalities by graphing. And 1.8 is optimization with linear programming. And so you'll see we have four objectives in this lesson, two from section seven and two from section eight. These are the two from section seven. Solve systems of inequalities graphically and determine the coordinates of the vertices of the region. And that second bullet point is important for the second two for 1.8, to be able to find the max or min of a function over a region and to solve real world optimization problems with linear programming. All of this falls under the ACE.3 standard as we're still dealing with systems of inequalities. So solving systems of inequalities, we have two steps. We're gonna look at step one, graph each inequality, shading the correct side. And then step two, identify the region that is shaded for all inequalities. Remember this final region will be the solution of the system. And remember if you're having difficulty graphing inequalities, go back to section 1.5 and look at that video. So in example one, we've got intersecting regions. So we've got these two inequalities that are defined in slope intercept form. And so in the first line, we've got a slope of two and a y intercept of negative three. And so negative three, go up to right one. Now with these, it's important to draw them as far out as you can, get as many points as you can. Did I miss a point? Yeah, I did. Okay, and then also going down and to the left, getting all those points there. This line will be solid because it's equal to. And the shading here, remember if we plug in zero, zero, that gives me that zero is greater than negative three and that is true. So my shading is gonna end up being on the zero, zero side of this line. So it's gonna be this nice pinkish region here. And so now we look at the second line, y is less than negative two plus x. And so when we graph that one, uh, we're gonna have a slope of negative one and a y-intercept of two. So we're at two, going down one, right one, down one, right one. And as we continue that pattern through all of these, and we'll continue the pattern up as well. Now, when we just graph lines, it's fine to just graph a couple of points, put arrowheads on the end, and call it a day. But when we're drawing these inequalities, and that should be dashed, not solid, please make sure your lines are appropriate. And so as we look at this line, y less than negative x plus 2, plug in 0 for both, is 0 less than 2, that is true. So 0, 0 is in my shaded region. And so it's going to be below this blue line here. And so what we end up with, as I shade all this in, we end up with these two regions. And go back to the directions. The directions said look for where the regions overlap. Well, where do the regions overlap? They overlap, and I'm going to cross-hatch it here with this green so we can see it, is this region in here. Because that's where the pink and the blue, or the purplish pink and the blue, make this darker color. And that's our overlapping region. Now, what we also have, I'm going to highlight this in yellow here, is we have this line here coming to this point here. Then we also have this part of this line coming down like so. Now, they intersect at this point here of 1, 1. And let's ask ourselves, is 1, 1 a solution to this system? Well, if both the lines were solid, it would be. But because one of the lines is dashed, it's not. Okay, so keep that in mind as we look at these graphs. Remember, you're looking for the overlapping region and the lines provided. And now if you're using pencil and paper, what I would recommend is erasing or doing very lightly the first two shadings, and then where they overlap, make that the very dark region. So it's known what region is the final solution region. Remember, a point that is up here would not work for the blue section. A point down here would not work for the red section. 
a point in this area works for both, meaning it's a solution. Second example here, we're going to look at a couple that are in standard form. 2x minus 5y is less than 10. 6x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 12. Remember, in standard form, best thing to do, plug in 0 for x. So 2x minus 5y less than 10. So we'll do 2x, and that cancels that there, is less than 10. So x, we're going to change this to equal, is to 5. And so my x is 5. And we do for the y, so negative 5y is less than 10. We divide by the negative 5. And we get the x. Technically, the inequality would flip. But again, I'm looking for the actual line, not the inequality at this point. And so my y-intercept is negative 2. And so continuing that in each direction, we end up with this. It is less than, not equal to, so we will not sh um, make this solid. We'll make it dashed as we go through. And the shading for this one will be uh, 0, 0. So 0 is less than 10, so 0, 0 is in my shaded region. And presto. Now we look at the second line, 6x plus 4y is greater than 12, or equal to 12. Um, so 6x is equal to 12, so x is equal to 2, 4y equal to 12, so y is equal to 3, so 2 and 3. And so continuing that slope, down 2, right 3, no, down 3, right 2, and then down 3, right 2 gets me to there, up 3, right 2 gets me to there, and so as we continue this line, This one will be solid because it's equal to, we get this. And if I plug in 0, 0, 0, 0 is not greater than 12. And so that will shade us away from 0, 0 in this case. That will take us this direction. Again, remember what we said back in 1.5, to shade where it works, ignore where it doesn't. So again, if it doesn't work for 0, 0, you're going to be shading that other side. And so we end up with this region, and again, I'm going to color it in with some bright colors just to highlight it. So again, we've got our crossing there of the two lines, so that's that region there and there. And then all of this area here, mostly in quadrant one, it does extend into quadrant two as well, um, will be the overlapping region where our solutions could be. Remember, any order pair in that shaded region is a solution. Also, points that would be solutions here, just to clarify, any points along this line, the blue line going up along our shaded region, would be solutions. Any points along this dash line would not be solutions to our system. Okay? Separate regions. So, looking at these, um, we're going to look at um, graphing two lines. And if we look at these slopes, go back to what we talked about the other day, these two slopes are parallel. And so the question becomes, what's going to happen? Well, when we graph these two lines, and I'm just going to draw a little sketch here because I forgot to put in a graph for this one. And so negative 3 fourths x plus 1, so I'm going to start at 1, go down 3, right 4 ends me up there. And that's going to be a solid line. Now I'm just doing a little sketch here um, just to do this quickly. Um, this shading, is y is greater than the line, and so 0, 0, 0 is not greater than 1. And so I'm going to be shading above this line, up in this direction, like so. And then when we do the other line, uh, y is less than or equal to negative 3 fourths x minus 2. So I'm down here, down 3, right 4 ends me up over here. And so we end up with... This line. And again, just drawing some sketches here because doing it kind of quickly. Um, zero, zero would not work here because zero is not less than negative two, so I shade away from the origin again. And so my shading's all down this way. And remember what we said in the steps that we're looking for where the two shadings will do what? Overlap. And these two shadings fail to overlap. And so if they fail to overlap, that means that uh, what has to happen? There is no solution because there's no overlap.
Okay. Now, if our shading regions were to overlap, we need to find where that overlap is. Um, it could be the region that is in the middle here if the two shadings go towards the opposite line. Or if the two shadings are going in the same direction, you're going to end up with a section that is either above the second line or below the second line, um, depending on the direction of the shadings. Um, and so just understand which way the shadings are going to get the lines in their proper spots. Okay. And so if you look at example B, that's what's going to happen there. Um, is that these two lines are going to go towards each other. And their, um, if we look, just looking at their inequalities here, both those lines are dashed. That has no difference in what's going to be shaded. That just means that the points along those lines are not solutions. So skipping ahead here, we're going to go to example three to write and use a system of inequalities to graph this. And so medical professionals recommend that patients have a cholesterol level below 200 milligrams per deciliter um, and a triglyceride level below 150 milligrams per deciliter. Write and graph a system that represents the range of cholesterol levels and triglyceride levels for patients. And so again, just going to draw a quick sketch because these two are actually pretty straightforward. Um, and we'll go in the order that they were given. So C will come first and T will come second, so cholesterol and triglycerides. Um, they tell us that the cholesterol has to be below, so that's less than 200, and the triglyceride level has to be below 150. And so here's 200 on cholesterol, here's 150 on triglycerides, and my first line is just going to be a dashed line here. And my shading is going to end up going towards the origin. Now what you'll see me do sometimes is I'll just draw a little arrows to show where the shading is going. Um, so that way I don't have a whole bunch of shadings on my graphs, especially when I'm doing them um, on paper and pencil. Um, second line, T is less than 150, so that's a horizontal line coming through like so. And this one is shaded towards the origin because zero would be less than 150. And so we end up with these shadings below here to left here. And so the overlapping region ends up being this region here that does touch the origin. And so any scores in this purple region would be good, right? Um, and of course, we look at other regions. This region would be bad for the triglycerides, but good for cholesterol. Um, the inverse here, good for, cholesterol, uh, good for triglycerides, but bad for cholesterol. And of course, this top region here, um, the top right region would be bad for both because you're just done healthy at that point in your cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Um, and so we can talk about points that are within this region. Um, so the intersection here at 200 and 150, both lines are dashed, so they are not a solution at 200 comma 150. But if we were just inside of that at 199 comma 149, we would be at a recommended level of cholesterol and triglycerides, barely. Um, your doctor would probably still tell you to move along and do better. All right, um, example B, category three hurricane has winds between 111 and 130 uh, and a storm surge of nine to 12 feet. Um, this problem's a little dated, but we can talk about that another time because um, the storm surge does not necessarily correlate to category, but we'll go with it for this example. It says write and graph a system of inequalities to represent the situation. And which graph represents this? Well, I took out the example graphs. So we're gonna graph this on our own. Um, and so as we write the system, we're going to have two variables. Our first variable will be the W for wind speed. And the second will be S for storm surge. And so as I draw my graph, again, I'm only in quadrant one here. Any ideas why I'm only in quadrant one? Well, of course, because wind speeds can't be negative and storm surge can't be negative in consideration of hurricanes, at least. Um, we could have negative tides, but not a negative storm surge. Um, and so as we look at wind speeds, it says that it's between 111 and 130. Now, we're going to consider this as inclusive. And so what that means, I'm going to write inequality. Well, the low end's 111, the high end's 130. Both ends are inclusive, 
and W's in the middle. And as we go to Storm Surge, S, and then we're going to be between 9 and 12 feet. And so what's going to happen is we're going to be 9 and 12. These are in feet for the Storm Surge. This is 111. This is 130 for the speed in miles per hour. And so what we end up with is this bounded region here, 111 130 with the shading in the middle. And then between 9 and 12 with the shading also in the middle. And so we end up, our shaded region is this box in the middle here. Again, that will not always be the case. It depends on the inequalities we have. But if we're dealing with two compound inequalities that are and problems, then we're dealing with a nice bounded region in the middle. Okay. Um, as we move along, you're going to notice this is kind of a long lesson because we are combining two lessons. Um, but we're getting into the optimization sides as we start to look at this. And so what we're going to look at real quick is to find the coordinates of the vertices. And so we're going to graph these three. I'm going to put the video on pause and you're going to see a video pop up in a sec. So while that magically popped up on your screen, that took me a couple minutes to get it graphed, but we've got our three regions here. So we've got our three lines, x, uh, 2x minus y is greater than or equal to negative 1, x plus y is less than or equal to 4, and x plus 4y is greater than or equal to positive 4. So we're looking for the vertices. And remember, the vertices, if we talk about uh, going back to geometry, the vertices are where we get intersections. And so a triangle would have three vertices because it has three sides. And so we grab those ordered pairs. And so this ordered pair is at 1, 3. This ordered pair is at 0, 1. And this one is at 4, 0. And so when we grab those vertices, we just list them all. Um, there's no necessary order. Um, the most common order is ordering the x's. Um, so we would list 0, 1 first, then 1, 3, then 4, 0. To, again, we're just talking about that graph as it goes from left to right. So as we move on to example 5 here, we're going to talk about regions that are either bounded or unbounded. And when we talk about a bounded region, we're talking about like the previous example where we had our graph create a figure, like a triangle, all three shades ended up inside. And so as we look at this one, we're going to graph the following system, name the coordinates of the vertices, and then we're going to find the max and min values of the function. And so I'm going to put a picture of this graph here. And so there's my graph. Um, so we've got three points of intersection because this creates a triangle. Again, you'll see that there's red, blue, and green shading all making this ugly brownish gray color here. And so I've got three vertices. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a table. So when I create this table, I'm going to take out the order pairs x and y. And so this first one is at negative 2, 4. This one is at 5, 4. And this one down here is at 5, negative 3. And so now here's the second piece. You'll see that I didn't use this function here. This is the function we're going to use to find the max and mins. And so I'm going to plug in to this function of 3x minus 2y. And so I'm going to take my x and y values, plug into this. We're actually dealing with a two variable function here, uh, which is a little bit new. Um, but this is the notation for it. And so plugging this in, we get 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. This is 8. And so negative 6 minus 8 is negative 14. We do it for the 5, 4. And so we get 15 minus 8. And 15 minus 8 is 7. And so then we do it for the third. 3 times 5 and negative 2 times negative 3. So that's 15. That'll give us a positive 6. So 15 and positive 6 is 21. And so what we're asked here is to find either the max or min. And this one actually asks for both because we're just looking at how do we find them. And so the maximum is here. This is our max at 21. It happens at the order pair 5, negative 3. Our minimum happens here because it's the smallest of the values. And it happens at the order pair negative 2, 4. And this is useful for business applications and regions and area as we look to maximize or minimize um, either cost or benefits or size um, based on given variables. 
Um, example six here is an unbounded region. And so again, we've got three functions that we're given here and a function that we're going to plug in to find the max and the min. And so we're gonna magically pop that graph in again. And so there's our graph, and so we're going to see this region here um, as we look at it. Remember, red, blue, and green are the three colors we're dealing with, and so where all those overlap, we've got this line coming out this way, this line coming out this way, these two are parallel, and we've got this crossbar here connecting them. And so the overlapping region is this region here, and the reason why we call it unbounded is because this doesn't make a polygon figure, in this case a triangle. And so the only vertices we have are here and here. And those two order pairs are at negative 2, 0, and 0, negative 2. And so we go to our table. 1 will be the max. 1 will be the min in this case because we're only dealing with two functions. And so 2x plus 3y, and then we'll get our result on the other end. So 2 times the negative 2 plus 3 times the 0, that gives us negative 4 and 2 times the 0 plus 3 times the negative 2 gives negative 6. And so with that result, this is our max, because negative 4 is larger than negative 6, and the negative 6 is our min. And when we talk about those, we're talking about what order pair they happen at, and so the negative 2, 0 is where the max occurs, the 0, negative 2 is where the min occurs. Okay, those are the only two test points we have. Okay, as we continue on, so optimization with linear programming, again, we're looking at maxes and mins. Um, and so define the variables and write the system of inequalities is step one. Graph it is step two. Find the coordinates of the vertices of the feasible region is step three. That's all stuff we just did in the previous examples. Write a linear function to be max or min, and that's going to come from the um, word problem. Number five, substitute the coordinates of the vertices into the function and get the greatest or least result as required for the problem. So if it tells us to maximize revenue, then we're going to look for the maximum. If it tells us to minimize cost, then we're going to look for the minimum. And so let's look at this example here. This should be example number seven, if I can number correctly. Um, we'll just delete that out. Oops, seven. There we go. And so landscaping. A landscaping company has crews who mow lawns and prune shrubbery. The company schedules one hour uh, for mowing jobs and three hours for pruning jobs. Each crew is scheduled for no more than two pruning jobs per day. Each crew's schedule is set up for a maximum of nine hours per day. On the average, the charge for the mowing the lawn is $40 and the charge for pruning the shrubbery is $120. Find a combination of mowing and pruning that will maximize, pay attention to that word, the income the company receives per day from one of its crews. And so, Pay attention to some of the details here. In the first sentence, they tell us how many hours each job takes. And so the crew is set up for a maximum of nine hours a day. And so based on hours, we can have the number of mowing jobs. M is the number of mowing jobs. Mowing jobs. And P would be the number of pruning jobs. It is always important to label your variables, identify what they are. And so we're told that the mowing jobs are one hour. So our first equation or inequality will be based on time. And so they can do one hour times the number of mowing jobs plus three hours times the number of pruning jobs. And it says that is a maximum of nine hours per day. And so maximum would mean that this time has to be less than or equal to a total of 9. So again, my first inequality, 1m, or just m, plus 3p is less than or equal to 9. My second one is in this middle sentence here. They kind of sneak it in here. It says that each crew can do no more than what? Two pruning jobs a day. And so that is only dealing with p. And so that piece is going to be that p has to be less than or equal to 2. So there's my second inequality. My third inequality, and you'll see I'm doing some colors here because my graph in a second will match these colors. It says, on the average, the charge for mowing a lawn is $40 and the charge for pruning is $120. Um, and so our third inequality will be based on the, actually this is not our inequality, this is our function. But our cost is our function. So F of M and P is going to be 40M 
plus 120p. So again, this is the function that we are defining here. And there's nothing else we can do, right? Because we're only dealing with for one crew. We're not talking about multiple crews coming in and doing this job. And so we're going to look at the graph. I'm going to graph it up, and you'll see the picture here in a second. All right, and so there's our graph. You'll see the red and the blue are represented. Um, and so as we look at the shaded region here, what we get is this to this point here, and then coming down here. And my shaded region is here. Now, understand, I'm not shading down below the axes because can I have negative pruning jobs or negative mowing jobs? No. And so really our bounded region also includes the two axes. Now, we didn't write those as our equations, but it's an understood that we can't have negative in this case. And so what we end up with is this trapezoidal region, and we end up with four vertices. Now, one, two, three, and technically the origin is a fourth vertice. Now, if I don't work anything, am I going to maximize how much money I make? No, so I'm not even gonna test zero, zero. Um, but I am gonna test the other three. I'm gonna test um, two printing jobs. I'm gonna test this order pair, which is at three, two, which would be three mowing jobs and two printing jobs. And this one out here at nine mowing jobs and no printing jobs. And so those are the three ordered pairs I will test. And so as we go to our table, Remember, I'll put my X, Y's first, or in this case, M and P, right? And so I've got 0, 2, 3, 2, and 9, 0. And so my function F of M comma P is 40M plus 120P. And so we get 40 times 0, because we didn't mow anything on this case, and 120 times 2, so that's 240. Um, we got 40 times the 3 plus 120 times the 2. This is obviously going to be more money, right? Because that's 240 on its own. It's another 120, so that gives us 360. So I now know that this case is not the max. We go to our third case. Uh, 40 times the 9 plus 120 times the 0. 40 times 9 is 360. So we end up with a dual max here. We get two cases that are the maximization. Um, so it does maximize with three mowing jobs and two printing jobs. Or it also maximizes with just nine mowing jobs. And actually, there's one other point we could have tested. and It is a, another maximum. It's right here at 6, 1. Um, if we do 6 and 1, we also end up with $240, and then $120 also gives us 360. Now, I can't do anything else along this line because um, there's not a whole number of mowing or pruning. But there are a couple other places where, again, I could have tested and seen what happens. But, you know, anything between 0, 2, and 3, 2 is going to maximize out at 3, 2 because I'm making more for more of the same job. Um, but these are trade-offs along this slant here. Um, and again, anything along this lower bar would be growing up until the 9, 0. And so we end up actually with three um, possible maximums because the third one doesn't happen at a vertice. Um, but that is because everything along this line would lead us to the same outcome of pruning of... Um, the $360, and that is our maximum output. And so I know this video has been long. This is two sections, um, but this has been 1.7, 1.8. Um, you know, if you got questions, ask about it. Um, again, I do appreciate you sticking with me through this whole video. And the word of the day is long-winded because I have been long-winded, and I appreciate you watching this whole thing. Y'all have a good day.